up mid soup. Touch should be going downtown train. Two dollar pistol, but the gun won't shoot. I'm in the corner in the pouring rain. Sixteen men on a dead man's chest. And I've been drinking from a broken cup. Two pairs of pants and a mohair vest. I'm full of bourbon and I can't stand up. Hey, little bird, fly away home. House is on fire, children are home. Hey, little bird, fly away home. House is on fire, children are home. Hey, it's Django from Calvander Sound. Uh, as you can tell, we're talking about Tom Waits, a uh, jockey full of bourbon today, and we're going to be talking about rhythm parts and how to make rhythms that are percussive and work in this particular style uh, using a few techniques that I, that I like to do, uh, including the rake and making your bass lines really stick out from the chords. So to get started, I just want to uh, go through how we're playing this. It's essentially a minor blues, uh, an F minor. So we have F minor, B flat minor, and C7. And that's the whole song. Uh, it's a 1-4-5 it's a uh, with a minor 1, minor 4, and a dominant 5. And that actually is true for a lot of Tom Waits songs and a lot of songs that sound kind of similar to this. I thought this was a great example. Later on, we'll check out Mark Ribot's lead uh, on Jockey Full of Bourbon, which is also pretty amazing. But here, what we're talking about is really how do we make this sound? Um, the very first thing, and this is something I'll emphasize over and over and over and over, is the right hand has to be a constant motion machine. It has to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. By making the right hand uh, move consistently, what we're doing is we're kind of taking it out of the equation and allowing our left hand to do a lot of the brain work. So in this case, we're starting with the F minor chord and the right hand is going The pattern with the right hand is going to sound like this. The right hand never stops moving, but it, what it does is sometimes it focuses on the low strings, sometimes it does what I call the rake, which is where you're moving across the strings uh, in a kind of exaggerated way so they can hear each one. And what it does is it makes it sound kind of like a percussion instrument. So we go bass, rake, up, down, up, down. And the last down we're emphasizing with a little accent. So it's one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Now counting seems simple, but it's actually incredibly important uh, because when you get into more complex rhythms like this, or even more complex, uh, counting will save you every single time, but if you don't count, you're essentially just guessing as to where uh, all the accents and everything are going to lie. So we go one E and, so on that first and after one, we're doing a rake. Uh, and you'll just have to have practice that to get the kind of feel for that. So we go. And you can almost hear the groove just from that. Then what we do is we go, we push down our F minor chord and we're going to play a bass line that goes. So we're doing an F minor, and it's first finger on the first fret, pinky on the fourth fret, and then third finger on the third fret of the A string. So it goes. So here it is really slowly. So you have to practice that for a while so it really gets comfortable. Um, once you get that, then we kind of plug that into our form. And you can get the uh, chords and, and everything like that at my website, calvandersound.com. So when we switch to the B flat minor, which is right here, first fret, root five, bar chord, we're gonna do the same thing. The difference being, it starts on the A string, so what you're gonna to have to do is your first finger is gonna to have to kind of mute the low string while you push down. So it goes. 
Notice you never really hear the chord completely ring. It's almost kind of like a half ringing, half percussion. So here's our two so far, F minor. The last one is C7. Now this is a little different because what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the C7, which is just our open C chord with our pinky down on the G string. And we're gonna go. And then our next bass note is actually up here. We're gonna slide our third finger from the third fret up to the seventh fret. And then the last note is the first finger on the fifth fret of the D string. So it goes like. So put together. So here's our whole form, and you can take it really slowly, uh, and we'll address this again in the next uh, series of these lessons on Jockey Fellow Bourbon, but this will get you started with the uh, rhythm. So one tip um, as you're trying to work on this, uh, this technique is your left hand should be really, really relaxed, just like in a bubble bath. Um, it's barely touching. It's only touching the tip just for that low string. And after that, it's just kind of just laying on the strings. The right hand has a stronger feel to it. And that's where you get that rake from a very light left hand and a very heavy right hand. And I realize that if you're a left-handed guitar player, this will be reversed. I'm actually left-handed when I write, but I play guitar right-handed, so I'm totally sympathetic, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it in terms of the way that my hands are working because my brain just can't handle it otherwise. Um, so I'm gonna play through one more time. So work on that. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel. That's also down there. And uh, I'll keep you updated on any new lessons that come up, and I'm going to be posting them regularly. Um, you can also visit me at calvandersound.com, where you'll find out more about me and guitar lessons and things like that. So we'll talk about how to play over these chords in a future lesson, uh, and specifically Mark Ribot's guitar solo on the original record, as well as just kind of how to do it yourself. Uh, so please do come check it out, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.